This is Black Row by the great Australian director Bruce Beresford. Let's talk about why I think this movie's pretty good, how you might watch it, what the movie's for, coming up next. <laughs> So in 1990, Dances with Wolves came out, directed by and starring Kevin Costner. It was a huge success. It won Academy Awards for Best Picture. And my guess is that's what spurred on or helped uh, the studios want to fund this movie about French Jesuits in 17th century Canada or what would become Canada. I cannot think of another movie that covers this period of time, although I'm sure there are a few. You know, in the late 1980s, you had The Mission starring Robert De Niro and Jeremy Irons, which is set in, I think, Brazil at about this time or, or maybe 100 years before. I have actually read a lot about this time period because I was in early American literature and in, in a couple of history classes in graduate school, so I've got a little familiarity, and I'm very happy this movie exists as a visualization of what it would have been like on the ground. This movie is very earthy, very dirty, very realistic, or seemingly realistic. It does seem to depict the French beginning to settle North America. Here they're in Quebec, that's where the movie starts. And then the Jesuit priest wants to go into the heartland or down the river and go see and minister to the Huron Indians. And this movie has kind of a heart of darkness quest epic to it as these characters, the French priest and several people, including Algonquins are gonna help him, go down the river and they run into a series of incidents and the French priest is not beloved by the Indians at all. And he's dealing with the fact that he is basically alone in the world trying to missionize this new world. Now, a couple of cautions here before we really get going. One, I don't like the music much at all. I think the musical score is too overly emotional at times. I think 75% of it could go away and the movie would still have a great impact. In fact, it would have more ambiguity and complexity to it. Second of all, if you have the DVD version like I have, it just looks awful, just even worse than a VHS copy, if you even know what that is. Get an HD copy if one exists, but last time I checked, there is no Blu-ray for this. I hope one comes out. Criterion Collection ought to make one. Now, the first half of the movie really depicts how this Jesuit priest doesn't fit in. There's another Frenchman going along with him, but he grew up in North America, actually was born in North America, so he's sort of half native and half French, and then there are all the natives, the Algonquins who go with the French priest. They don't like him. They're not sure about him. They run into a medicine man who says he's a demon. They think he might be a demon, and the head of the, the Algonquins in the party is having dreams about something. He sees a black robe who is, he thinks, the French Jesuit in his dream. He's not sure what to do with that, and so the Indians or natives believe in the dreams, even though the French Jesuits are telling them, hey, believe in Christianity, and they're trying to get them to believe in the paradise to come after death. Here, this movie depicts the division or separation between natives and French. I don't think the movie really picks sides. I think the movie sentimentalizes and sympathizes with pretty nearly everybody, except for the Iroquois who show up later on, and the Iroquois are an empire, and you do see natives hate and kill other natives or harm other natives as well as natives harming priests in this or Frenchmen. So there is some violence and the movie doesn't romanticize noble savages and the movie doesn't, you know, hate colonialists, but it doesn't really play to any one particular side. That's actually why I like the movie. I don't feel like this movie is too ideological as so many movies are, including most Westerns and a movie like Dances with Wolves. The natives don't understand the French priest. Even he doesn't understand himself. Why is he going to do this? Does he believe in the Catholic Church and their vision of paradise? <laughs> what is the world that he's stuck in? The natives have some funny things to say about the French. They even sort of are upset that they are allowing this immigration and have gotten involved and depend on international trade. Hint, hint, sort of a political problem or political problems you still deal with in the late 20th century when this movie came out and the 21st century. In the second half of the movie, you get a lot of really great scenes about as I said, what it's like to be on the ground, including a lot of shots 
about each of the characters, particularly the priest, within this huge natural environment. On the one hand, it's a very beautiful, very beautiful scenery, very beautiful cinematography in this, and I think really an under-photographed, at least in terms of movies, area around the Great Lakes in North America. On the other hand, it's brutal, it's it's harsh, and once they get into wintertime, and that's where the journey takes them smack into the middle of winter. There you get near the end of the journey, the Heart of Darkness journey, it's going into the frozen wasteland and the middle of winter, which is brutal and cold and very difficult to deal with. I won't give anything away, but the movie is very memorable in a couple spots to me. One of them, it depicts actually what running the gauntlet is, and those of us in the United States, we use this cliche or phrase, running the gauntlet, just casually, where did that, what did that mean? Where did it come from? You will see in this movie, and it is very unpleasant. The movie depicts possible cooperation and amalgamation between both the French and the Indians. Something happens when two groups from different parts of the world meet up, and of course, a la globalization. This is a period, and it had been, remember this movie takes place in 1630, for the last 150 years since Columbus, or way before that, globalization is slowly happening, and the ability to move around the world, move goods, trade goods, move people, move animals, has been happening, and here you see the effects of it on native cultures, and native beliefs. The encounter between Christianity and native beliefs is palpable, real, and interesting. As I said, the movie does not romanticize natives, but it does sympathize with them, and it shows you there's differences between the native groups, something very important to know when you're studying history, the history of North America, probably the history of any part of the world, is that the native groups aren't unified into one giant monolith called Indian. You have a variety of tribes, and they all interacted differently with the colonists here, French colonists, but we get hints that there are Dutch and English colonists around too. This movie is not top tier great, but it is capably done by the great director Bruce Beresford, who you've seen videos of on my channel. For example, uh, Tender Mercies and Breaker Morant. I really like his movies. I think they're very interesting, helpful, historical, and they care about individual human beings, characters, and the situations they get caught up in. A good comparison work is Werner Herzog's A Guerre, Wrath of God. In that one, the Spanish colonists are crazed. Of course, they're played by Germans. And that one really depicts, you know, the early 1970s ethos of colonists versus natives or native lands. And then you get the Disney Pocahontas version coming right after this movie, which is to me kind of a joke. But here, I think this movie is pretty good. We could do better perhaps, but pretty good overall, and trying to pick this historical period and give us a sense of what it looked like and felt like to be there. What do you think of Black Robe? Have you seen this movie? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.